going to be really exciting tonight because it's the last round of Monday Night Mayhem. So for the, the first month, the tournament's going to been going pretty good. Um, seems like we're going to get some new participants tonight, which is fun. So whatever you see up here tonight, that's what uh, the opening's going to be. And yeah, it's fun. It's an unrated tournament because it's thematic. So you can talk, you could be on your cell phone. Uh, if you're new to chess, you, know, you can say, well, what should I do here? What's going on? And you, know, you can talk to people. So it's kind of fun. It's just a fun little tournament. And the prize this month is the uh, free entry to the Metro Class Championship. So somebody's going to get an entry fee worth about 50 bucks. So that'll be exciting. And today for our opening, I picked one of the most popular openings in all of chess. So many people have requested it. So tonight we're going to do the Sicilian Nidorf. As requested by Michael Phillips, Paul Morphy, Marif Sarkar, Frederick, PJ Rutkowski, the Boss Minecraft PvP, and many others. So when it's that popular, you just have to do it. You got to give the people what they want. So today we're going to do the Nidorf. Okay, we'll put the, the first few moves on the board. White is getting ready. If he gets another turn, he'll play d4. So the Sicilian is the most aggressive way for uh, black to combat this opening. And all right, so white will develop his knight. And there's several moves here, but we're going to be looking at a, a d6 Sicilian in this game. The point of d6 is to control e5, so you can play knight f6. Uh, so white's idea was to play d4. Black takes. White gets to take back with the knight now. And white will often try to play c4 if you just wait. For example, if you just play g6, maybe white will play c4. So the most common move for black is to attack the pawn and force white to put a knight in front of the pawn. And OK, so here we go. This is our position. And the move we're going to look at tonight, and there's, there's a few here. You know, you can play e6. That's fine. g6, we've, we've had a look at in the past. But today we're looking at the Nidorf a6. So if you've never seen this, you might be thinking, why, why is this so popular? Um, why have all of like, the best players ever and several world champions, Gary Kasparov has played this, um, Anand plays it a lot, Topalov, and there's so many people that they play this opening. Why do they do it? Why do they move their pawn on the side of the board? And to understand why they might do that, uh, we need to understand the consequences in this position of the move e5. This is a move that black sometimes likes to play in these openings. And so in the Nidorf, that's what he's going to aim for. And all right, if, if white is compliant, then you know, he, just, he just moves his knight back or something, not necessarily the best move at all. Then white, uh, black will just get sort of a normal position. Um, but he, you know, white has a much more testing move in this position. So if you do play this with, with white uh, and you get this position, there's just one move you need to know here to get a, a big advantage. Um, and that's bishop to b5 check. Welcome. And uh, OK, after this move, there's not really a great way for black to, to meet this check. So we'll just take a quick look at some of these to see how he can get an advantage early. If they block with a bishop, I mean, the other option is they can block with the knight, you can get a, a nice advantage by trading the bishops, which is greatly in white's favor, because the key strategical battle in this position is going to be over the d5 square. That's a weakness that black created when he played e5. And we'll take a look at e5 later and try to understand the pros and cons. Why would somebody do that, create a weakness? Uh, what's, what's the benefit to black? We'll have a look at that. But here, since he got rid of the light squared bishops, well, he gets a very pleasant position just after retreating the knight. And he's going to castle and keep control over this square. And OK, just to go a few moves farther, if OK, white, this is also a typical way. He's going to exchange the knight on f6. That way he gets more control over d5. Um, so we'll just put an example on the board. And this is sort of the dream position for white. He's often trying to get a really good knight versus a bad bishop. That's the minor piece ending that, that white really wants to get in this. So if you trade off all the pieces and you're left with that knight on d5 and a dark squared bishop that can't touch it, then you're playing the opening right. So, and it's uh, also interesting, if we look here, there's a move that's not as good, but it's interesting when we compare it to a line in the future here. And that's knight to f5, which, OK, that seems like a pretty good move. Um, right? We're eyeing some of these key squares here, making it hard for him to develop the bishop. But in this position, black has a little, little tactical move. He can take on e4. And OK, so if you recapture, I'm going to take your knight, and I just want a pawn. But white can do a desperado here. He can grab this pawn with check. And OK, after these moves, things are looking pretty decent for white. You know, what's, where's black going to castle? But he does get the move d5 in. And when you're playing black and you're playing the knight orf, this is the move you're always trying to achieve. 
You're trying to get the move d5 in to get rid of your weakness. And all right, well, you can just retreat, but there's a tactical move. And we got a lot of people now, so I'll ask the audience. Uh, does anyone see the tactical move that white can play here? Is bishop to h6. Uh, what's going on? You're hanging your bishop? Uh, well, no, because what does white play here? Oh. Yeah, right, so we, we fork the, the queen and the king. So that's a tricky move that is possible in this position. And this is mostly just an example of the kinds of things that can happen. So black will instead uh, castle. And OK, you can take this guy. But after, we'll just make a couple more moves here. In a position like this, white really isn't thinking that he has any really large advantage in this position. So all right, it's true that this king is a little bit exposed. But uh, the center is really nice for black. And it's, it is a roughly equal position. So that's why most people, if we go back in this position, uh, they don't prefer to put their knight on f5. You know, they could just go back and you have a good position. And we'll compare that to a, a different line, because we'll go back to this position for a second. And this time, we'll block with a knight. Well, in this position, knight to f5 is a really good move, and it comes with a threat. It's nice that the knight can't be taken. And OK, we got two pieces aiming at d6, so we're already threatening to win a pawn. So the most common move here is a6. And in order to save time, we can trade here. And black has to take back with the queen, which is you know, a little bit undesirable. He wishes he could take with a bishop, but then his d-pawn would fall with check. So the queen will take. And now, all right, there's, there's several ways. One is you can just put your knight here and control d5. But perhaps even more testing is the move bishop to g5. And all right, is this the same situation? Can black take on e4 here? Now if he takes on e4, We'll throw the same check in. He'll take back. We'll take back. But now the position is a little bit different. The queen here is a little bit awkward. And the benefit of having this knight here, or the bishop here, is that sometimes we'll play knight f6 check, and he'll have to take with his bishop. So he can, the best move, perhaps objectively, is just to, to castle and let this pawn fall, which means you shouldn't play this way as black. But uh, if you try to play more like a human, knight to d5, or sorry, pawn to d5, OK, we get this check in. So now we see the importance of having that bishop there. And all right, so we put an attack on the rook. And they castle. And we'll just go over uh, a few more moves here. White's best move is uh, queen f3. And all right, he's going to put his queen here and, you know, and try to checkmate you. But OK, so we'll look at this position. So black has to stop checkmate. How can he do it? He can put the queen on. So queen g4, and all right, we're just throwing this sort of as an example. This isn't the, the feature of the lecture here, but all right, something like rook d1. And if black ever trades, this is going to be really bad for him. Yeah, so white does have doubled pawns. That's true. But OK, I'm going to put my rook up here. I'm going to bring my other rook over here. And I'm going to have a lot of pressure on your h pawn. And if I ever take that and I get a rook here, you might be in a lot of trouble. So this would be really, really bad for, for black. OK. So we can kind of see that all right, we need to, in this position, control the b5 square. Because we don't want a bishop going there. Sometimes we don't want a knight going there. And that's why, you know, over the years, as we've learned in theory has evolved, a lot of people have went to a6. And if you're in a database and you just hit the top moves and everything, you're going to end up in this position, because this is the most common way to play. All right, what's up, Scott? And all right, so we'll, we'll take a look at it here. And for white, there's so many moves here. If you just play a random legal move, it's probably theory, because it's been played so much. There's hundreds of thousands of games. People have tried all sorts of things to get an advantage. For a long time, the most popular move was uh, bishop to g5, which I recommend looking at if you want the really, really sharp positions. And some of the, the craziest things that can happen in chess happen in these lines. But we won't go over that tonight. Tonight we're going to go over the English attack, because I, I think it's not only is it really popular still at the grandmaster level, it's if you watch people at the club whenever they play the Nidorf, this is what I see a lot. So I think this is important for a, a club player. So we'll take a look at this. Also, I mean, there's so many moves. Uh, bishop to e2 is a move. This is the classical variation. Um, all right, a4 is a move. 
Uh, very popular right now at the highest level is G3 with this Fianchetto variation. And uh, Tata Steel will be over by the time you're watching this at home. But right now it's ongoing and uh, the Nidorf has been played twice in that tournament and both people prefer G3 in this position. So you see this a lot at the highest level, it's becoming quite popular. Um, and oftentimes when they play G3, they'll later play H3 and G4, which is why sometimes people like to in this position play H3. So this is the Adams attack. And the reason you're not super grandmasters is because you play in the center too much. So you got to play A6. You know, you got to play H3. And it's funny that, you know, both people are playing on the sides, but yet this is quite a, quite a popular approach. And there's even crazier ways to play G4. You, you can put your rook on G1, and then, okay, you can try to play G4. So all sorts of things have been played. The most common that I see, at least around here, is the English attack. And, all right, White's plan is similar to the Yugoslav attack in the dragon. He's going to you know, protect his pawn, and he's going to start an avalanche, and he's going to go attack the Black King, and he's going to be thinking about checkmate. Also, he's going to castle the other way, and it's both people are going to be attacking each other. So we'll get some really sharp, crazy stuff today. Now, the most common move is e5. So that's going to be the focus when we look at our games today. Um, it's possible also to play e6. That's a very popular alternative. But now we've transposed to a Scheveningen, which is a, you know, a completely different opening. But yeah, it's very popular as well. Now there's one popular alternative that black can play here other than e5. And that's the move knight to g4, immediately challenging this knight. And now you'll see a lot of super grandmaster games that end like this. And then, and then they, they repeat. And then, right. So then, right, here you go, draw. So this is a lot of top level games. So when you're not in a competitive mood, you, this is a, a common way to, to make a draw. So when you, when you need to win your tournament, <laughs> you want your draw, that's, that's the way to do it. Now, if black is the one that wants to keep playing for a win, he can consider playing e5 here. And uh, if, uh, if in this position, white is you know, feeling a little more ambitious, he wants to, to keep fighting, the move he can play here is bishop to g5, with an annoying pin on the e-pawn. And play can get really crazy really fast. For example, uh, they can attack your bishop, and they can go crazy on the king side and expand. And so this is a, a common position. And yeah, you know, what is black doing? This is kind of crazy. Isn't he creating a lot of weaknesses? What's going on? Uh, yeah, so this is a decent way to play. And the most common moves are either bishop e2 or h3, kicking this knight away. If you play bishop to e2, black is intending to play a move like h5. He's serious about moving those pawns over there. Uh, but to show a, a funny blunder, what white is looking to do in this position is reroute this bishop. He no longer belongs here. He should go back to his natural diagonal. So we'll play a bad move. Uh, we'll see why h3 is more common. In this position, black has a, a nice winning combination here. Right, knight to e3, which is an excellent move. Um, and it might just appear, okay, well, you're going to move your queen. Maybe I'll grab your bishop. But black has an even better move here. And so this is why I showed uh, this position. Because there's so many tactics like this when you play the Sicilian. So let's see. So here's, who's the, the tactical genius in here? You are? Well, I guess. What is it? So uh, bishop takes d4. Awesome, yeah. Bishop takes d4, which wins some material. The point is, if queen takes, even you see it. Right, and so yeah, oops. Um, so that would be a big mistake. Okay, so you can't play f3 here, which, okay, is why play, people play h3. And we won't go too much into this, but it's nice to know that this, this line exists. So, all right, we'll get back to the main line here. And we'll be looking today at lines where they don't play knight to g4, which means we'll look at e5. And now the most common move is bishop to b3, because you're not going in the way of your pawns, because uh, you want to move these guys, and you want to checkmate black. What did I say? Bishop. I said bishop to b3. Yeah, I don't know. There's so many pieces. I don't know the names of all of them. Come on. There's too many pieces. All right, yeah, knight to b3 is the, the main line. Uh, knight to f3 is definitely a, a relatively nice way to play, though. It's a little bit more positional. White will often castle kingside in these lines. So we'll just show uh, some lines here. And what white is playing for is control over d5. That's the, that's the big thing. 
And so there's the big debate when you play the knight orf and you play the move e5. White's going to try to say, you know, this is, you got this big weakness here. Eventually I'll install a piece there. It'll be great forever and ever. But black is saying with this move, well, I got my fair share of the center. And I'm going to get some really active piece play. And if ever I get to break like this, usually black will be better. So white has to be really careful. Um, and yeah, so what, that's what black's compensation is. It's active pieces, dynamic play. Uh, and OK, we'll just go a few moves farther down the line here. And all right, so yeah, so again, we see this, this common maneuver. We're trying to take one of the defenders of the d5 square. But uh, black can retreat here. And all right, this is a, a position that has occurred several times. And all right, so what, what does black have for, you know, he allowed this knight here. That's white's big trump. But all right, black gets some you know, active play. He gets to bring his knight out. He can attack the bishop. Uh, sometimes he might think about playing f5. And he's going to find some pretty good squares for all of his pieces. So all in all, that's, that's an interesting way to play. But we're going to look at the, the sharper move in this position, which is knight to b3 with the attention of checkmating your opponent. OK. And all right, we'll play a few just natural developing moves uh, so we can see sort of the point. And all right, so this is basically the starting position of tonight's lecture. So all right, what is going on? What are the plans? Again, White's plan is the simple and obvious, you know, pawn storms, rah, and he attacks all the squares. That's what White is playing for. And what is Black going to do? Well, he also has pawns that he can use. He can go dislodge a knight. Maybe he can dislodge the other one, play b3, crash open on the, the queen side. And all right, maybe he's going to put a, a rook over here. Sometimes we'll have the thematic exchange sacrifice. And it's a big race. Who's going to checkmate who first? All right, so this first game that we're going to look at is a very nice victory by White. And I'm often very fond of the games that happen here in St. Louis because I'm watching them live. I remember what my emotions were when I was watching the game. Uh, and so this is a game from the, the Sinkfield Cup in uh, 2015. So this was uh, you know, Carlson versus Wesley So. And this was a, a very, very nice game. All right. So we got the English attack. And all right, so a little bit different approach here. He didn't just you know, develop his bishop and castle. He's uh, getting his pieces out. He's going to play b5 really quickly. And all right, so we get such a position. And all right, and yeah, so here we go. So now we're going to see who can attack who faster. And this game is going to be an excellent example of white controlling d5. Um, he's even going to sacrifice a pawn just to make sure he has a huge grip on d5. So the, the storm begins. And all right, black gets to attack first, which is not necessarily the most common line. Most people like to castle with black. But uh, this also leads to an interesting pawn structure. So the knight installs itself in d5. And now black has the opportunity to take it and change the pawn structure. So the bishop will take. The pawn will take back. And all right, now black is saying, well, I don't have this weakness anymore. And white gets the claim, well, I got the two bishops. And we'll see white got a really powerful attack in this game. Um, all right, this is, uh, but this is black's also main idea. He's going to try to win the d5 pawn. Now to take with the queen and allow this capture. And now your move, only in this position. And this position has been seen several times, and white tries to get uh, you know, a little attack going before black gets castled. Uh, in practice, white has done you know, pretty well in these lines. But uh, the, the highest rated game saw a non-winning with the black pieces from this position. So it's, it's really double-edged, and a lot of crazy stuff are going to happen. And you know, taking the b4 pawn is really risky, because you know, now the b file is open, so sometimes bad stuff will happen here. Um, but in this game, Carlson took a different approach. Knight to a5, which means he's sacrificing this pawn. And OK, you put your knight on the same diagonal as a queen. So, so what's going on? You've got to move your knight now. And that's what he did. And wh all right, why did you sacrifice a pawn? Well, again, we're going to see he's going to go for control of d5. So after he takes, all right, we got, we got everybody here looking at d5. And now the, the novelty of the game, bishop to c4, a very logical move. Again, just controlling the d5 square with everything that he's got. OK. So white moves back. And now, occasionally, 
bad stuff can happen on this diagonal. So white has to be careful. Like if he plays inaccurately, black will have this move, which is a little bit troublesome for him. You know, you don't want this bishop to get active. So the move h4 was played. All right, so he's just stopping that move. Black gets on with the attack. And a nice move again. He's just shutting down the bishop on this diagonal here. All right. And now also interesting too, he puts his bishop on d5. And black is, at some point, he's going to take this bishop. And then white's going to be very, very happy because he's going to take with a knight. And he's going to get the dream position, the good knight versus the bad bishop. All right. All right, yeah, so this was also an excellent idea. How is white going to continue his attack? Well, he wants to keep these pawns where they are. So he's instead going to play f4, f5. If he gets a chance, you know, he's going to keep storming all the way down and open up some files here. Uh, so he does now indeed take, which I think is a bit of a mistake. Um, you, you know, you don't want to enter this scenario with the good knight versus the bad bishop. So, you know, he's saying, all right, I am up a pawn, though. So what's more important? Is it the positional compensation or is it the material? And that's kind of what the argument is here in this game. So he moves the queen out of the way and yeah, he gets on with it. Um, yeah, you really can't allow me to play f5 because then you know, I'm going to play f, uh, f6. So he had to play f5 himself. And now white plays you know, a tempting move, a goading move. He says, all right, put your pawn on e4. So black has a passed pawn. That's true. But uh, the position with the pawns blocked is really going to favor the guy with the knight. Because you know, this guy gets better the more this guy is shut down. And at some point, he's going to get a pawn all the way to h6. And he's going to you know, try to get his queen on this diagonal. And maybe he'll get some you know, attack going. So that's what he does. And now he does not move his knight. You know? So obviously like a bad move would be you know, getting rid of your knight. Uh, he just gets on with it. So one question I have is, what's happening here? Didn't he, did he just blunder a piece? What was white going to play in this position? Did, did, did Carlson just blunder a piece? Yeah. Queen B3. Yeah, queen b3 is the idea. And yeah, we'll pick that guy up next. So he's not really threatening to take the knight. Uh, so said g6. And only now does he play queen to b3, threatening some discovered checks. So black has to be careful. So rook f7 blocks that diagonal. And now a really nice positional move. And the computer doesn't find it until it's on depth 45. Yeah, I studied this game. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> a4. Um, the, the idea is, all right, we're keeping these pawns here. And yeah, it's nice to have this guy on the light square. He's got great control of light squares. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see what happens here. <clears throat> OK, so black, his only real hope here of getting a, a decent position is to somehow find a great square for this guy. So will he ever get out here and go somewhere useful on this diagonal? That's, that's part of the question. And typical Carlson, he puts the squeeze on here. He uh, doubles his rooks. And OK, he gets ready. So this move is coming. Will the bishop reemerge and have a nice home? Well, he does it. So what's going on here? Why is uh, Carlson allowed this? What's, what's happening? Even if you move your rook, maybe he'll take your knight. And you know, he's a pawn up. So what move did white play here? And there's two right answers. So there's two good moves here. One of them is just simply to take this pawn. That's a good move. But he chose a different move, which is also very good. Knight to c4. And all right, you can take my rook, but now you're not defending the a pawn. Yes? With his rook? Yeah, he's also putting pressure on that pawn with the queen in the rook. That's true. Um, Black's kind of happy because he got rid of his bad bishop. And even better, he took a rook. So I don't know. I'm going to defend both of my pawns. And now I'm up material. So this, this is an idea. And we, we do, you know, we're thinking about sacrificing stuff in this position. But he chose instead knight takes a5. Because now at least we're going to take a rook and we're going to get the exchange back. Um, 
Okay, so he decided he'd be a little tricky. He, uh, in this position, he didn't just take the knight. And uh, if he ever enters this end game, and it's you know queen and rook versus queen and rook, white's pressure is going to be really strong. These you know the queen is going to have excellent chance on either one of these diagonals for uh, for a big attack. So he needs to keep the minor pieces on the board to have a chance here. And all right, he's saying, well, maybe your knight is a little bit trapped in there. So he had to protect it. And all right, what's going on here? Can, can I just win a piece? This wasn't played, but what would white play in this position? Because if you do nothing, I just take your knight. Um, and this is also pretty powerful. You know, the knight can uh, can come back here with some threats, and you know, this queen is thinking about sneaking in. A lot of bad stuff can happen here, so you don't get to trap the knight. Uh, so he instead tries e3. Will this pawn be enough? Will this cause white enough disturbance? He's got to worry about this guy all the time. Is he going to make it down the board? White has a pass pawn too, so he pushes it. And all right, this was the the move that really lost it. For, uh, for black here. His position was already very bad, but now it's, the computer says it's over. Um, it's over. But you have to play the right move here. So who can play like Carlson? Yeah. All right, and you made the same mistake that I like to make. You called your knight a bishop. You learned from the best. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so the, the knight can go to d8, and yeah, really bad stuff is, is going to happen here. So he, he saved his rook. Uh, white was threatening checkmate. So he saved the rook, and who knows? I mean, is black going to get a powerful enough attack here along the a file? You got a question? I have a comment. Okay. Do they have a check? They do have a check, and he played it. And all right. Yeah. This is the best move, but well, Carlson didn't play it. But yeah, that, you're playing better than the world champion. Because now what does black do? The problem is, either way you take this, uh, yeah, you get into a lot of trouble on this diagonal over here. Because wherever, wherever you go, right, I munch up these guys. So this would have been the, the actually best way to play. So you, you're playing better than the world champ. Uh, but knight to d4, also very strong with the same sort of ideas. And all right, he's just using his knight here to control these squares. All right, but is Black's attack going to be fast enough? He's got some serious threats. What's White going to do? All right, so he goes and picks up the pawn. Now this H pawn is a huge advantage for White. He just has to not get checkmated. Okay, so he gave another check. And all right, C3. So he made a little bit of lift here. All right, so he's not getting checkmated. Hooray. He might get checked, but he didn't. Uh, but Black's going to get checked again. And OK, so black kind of has to defend against this, this. And Danny, now we're going to fight. You and me. This is, this is when it happens. Let's do this, all right? I bench more than you. I work out more than you. We're going to fight here. So Danny, I can read his mind. He's the type, when you get this position and you can win the end game, Danny wants to trade the queens. I guarantee it. Am I right? But you could also not trade queens, and you would also win. Hey, boo? Uh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, Danny and I have this conversation all the time. And in positions like this, when my queen is better, uh, I like to keep the queens on the board because my queen's better than your queen. Your king is a, a lot more likely to get checkmated than my king. But, you know, even Carlson makes mistakes sometimes. You know, he, he plays like Danny. Uh, he traded the queens. <laughs> uh -uh. All right, and so we got this position. And um, all right, what's this, what's this knight planning to do? I mean, this, this could be a big threat taking here, because if you get two passers, that could be really, really bad, actually, which is why he chopped off the, the knight here. OK, and he took back with a rook. What's that? Bishop. Knights, bishops. I mean, there's so many pieces on the board. It's like, I, I don't know all of their names. That's why I need your help. Do you, do you know all of the names of all the pieces? Wow. <laughs> um, has, has white blundered here? Uh oh, is, uh, is black just going to go make a queen? Your rook can't stop me in time. 
Is that true? All right, he can check. And then wherever the king goes, he's in time. <laughs> yeah, but you got to be careful. I mean, king and, pawn and end, or king and rook endings, they can be tricky. So he has to make sure he's there in time. All right. What was? Okay. So you're, you're playing like a like Wesley so, <clears throat> and that was played. So we'll see what happens. All right. The king went over to go stop the pawn, but gave a check, and now we can blunder. We can blunder now, right? And now yeah, you can't stop my pawn. So we could blunder. But uh, he didn't. He played a little bit better than that. Uh, so, all right. So what's going to happen here? Is this guy going to be strong enough to win? <laughs> but all right. Will the king get back in time? Um, all right. In the game, he did not make it in time. And OK. So he's getting ready. Yeah, in this position, he's already threatening to, to go queen. So black has to stop it. And c4, a really nice move. It's hard to play black here. It's basically Zug Swain. So, all right. He had to move. And yeah, it's not a lot of fun. And here he, uh, he gave it up. The problem is he's not going to be able to save this guy. And if white ever gets this pawn, then you know, the game's over. I got, I got two pass pawns. Uh, you know, so even if you go here, I check you away. And then wherever you go, I take this. And then uh, that's game over. Did you have and I really like this game. I was fantastic watching it live. Because in this game, white gave up a pawn even to get big control over d5. And we saw a great example of having the good knight versus the bad bishop. That's the dream when you play this position as white. So now we'll look at a game where black played a little bit better. And it's one of the most amazing games ever played. So even Danny will be impressed. All right, this is the game uh, between Sergei Karyakin and Vishwanathan Anand that was played in 2006 in the, the Chorus tournament uh, in Vikonze. And we get the same position here. The Nidorf, the English attack. And OK, in this game, white, uh, did, uh, sorry, black did castle, uh, king, king side and white went queen side. So now we're going to have the race, which is more typical of, of what happens in this position. Uh, so here he comes, and here comes black. So the, the race is on, and so white gets to attack a piece first. And I really like uh, recommending these lines sort of for, for younger players that are strong enough to understand openings, because these kinds of positions really teach you a lot about chess. Uh, you are attacking them, they're attacking you. You need to balance attack and defense and you know, play really accurately. And it kind of teaches you that when they make a threat, you want to be trying to play an even stronger threat. So this really helps you know, people that are, are just learning chess and you know, young players alike. So it's, it's good. We don't have to move our knight. And so he didn't play it in here. Uh, this is a, you know, also a move. But yeah, so usually we get the same pawn structure that we saw in the last game after this. And then you're just careful not to lose this knight. And this is a playable line. Um, but instead, we saw a, a much more aggressive move, b4. So we got both people attacking people. But uh, the problem for white is he can't just, you know, oh, I get to take you first. Because now, at the end of this line here, you take the queen with check. So white has to be careful. And what to do with the knight? Well, he went to e2. That's a nice safe square. And now it's your turn. Where are you going to put your knight? And OK, he went back. And OK, to discuss why he didn't go to the side in this position, now white uh, gets a really easy attack. He can put the knight on g3. And opening the h file is just about the worst thing you can do in these kinds of positions. It's really easy to be white with an open h file. Because, yeah, it looks like you're going to get checkmated pretty quickly. What? You know, you don't want to open the h file. So he has to go back. and. It's not looking very good. Actually, we'll flip the board. We'll give black a little bit of respect. You like that, Danny? You happy now? <laughs> um, so now, now, is everybody confused? Like, whoa, whoa. what's happening now? <clears throat> um, all right, so f4 was played. His intention is, is obviously just to play f5. And maybe he's going to trap the bishop uh, or force the bishop to trade itself for a knight. Now, it's, yeah, it's not really advised that you take this pawn <laughs> because, uh, OK, let's see. You know, when the knight's going to take back, this bishop's going to find a really nice diagonal. And all right, white's going to get a lot of activity. And the open f file isn't the best for black. Yet again. OK, and we'll see it. We'll see what happens here. 
So black instead, he gets on, he pushes his pawn, and here it is. So the bishop's trapped. Is he going to trade for the knight? Or is, is black going to find something more complicated? And that's what happens in all of these lines, you know, where they're attacking us, we're attacking them. It's, you know, it's, it's very crazy and dynamic play. So he attacked the knight instead. And so he's saying, all right, you take my bishop, I take your knight, and, you know, things are looking pretty good for me. So he instead moved his knight, but not, not to the safest square. He went to the most complicated square. You could put your knight on the worst square possible, and then somebody will go to your board and say, how did you get your knight to a1? I thought that was impossible. And then, you know, after you take this, your bishop's not going to get trapped in there. Um, what black's going to have an excellent game. So instead, you know, he moved his knight, so black took it. This, you know, you just sacrificed a piece. Uh, what was the point? What's going on here? All right. And so black decides he pushes. So if you just take this, you're going to lose because I'm going to make a queen. You know, you can, even, you can take with check, but I'll take back, and uh, this is unstoppable. Here we go. For time's sake, we can't do any more questions. <clears throat> okay. So instead, he, he uh, moved his king over, and black took with check. Knight takes, which is important, and we'll see why. And now we're trying to understand black kid, what should he do? His bishop is attacked. Well, here he has a, an excellent move, maybe one you, you wouldn't consider when you first look at the position, but bishop to b3. So he's giving up his bishop in order to open the a file. So this is the, the key way to get access to the king. And the knight really must block. But let's blunder, because blundering is fun. That's something people can relate to. All right, if I go here instead, and I'm going to say, all right, I'll go get your pawn, put my knight in the center, I'm doing great. Black now has a, a winning move. Who can do it? It's a, it's a nice little tactic here. Yeah, rook to h8, check. Excellent. And when you come in, uh, yeah, the point is we, we get our queen in here. And you can give your queen up to stop getting mated, or you can get checkmated. You know, it's your choice. So what, yeah, white either loses material there, or he gets mated. So yeah, it's important that you put the knight on a3. And you know, you got this, this access here, so we got to shut it down. <clears throat> OK, and so what did, what did black play here? Um, he, uh, he moved his rook, or no, sorry. In, uh, in this position, he moved his rook. And nowadays, it's slightly more popular to put the rook on a4. Um, this is still all theory. Not only are you, you know, putting pressure on this pawn here, but white often wants to play the move uh, queen to b4 in these lines. And you stop that from happening. Okay. So instead, rook a5 was played. Um, Black's big idea here is, all right, he's going to put a, a queen on the a file. She's going to be eyeballing this. We're thinking about some exchange sacrifices on occasion. And now white plays the losing move. He should play queen to b4, but he went one square too short. And uh, this is why I really like this game. Uh, there's a fantastic sequence here. It doesn't look like black is just winning. You know, it's, it's really hard to, to figure it out. Um, but let's see. So he first moves his queen. He attacks the, the e4 pawn. White defends. And now the craziest move you've ever seen. So at home, you really want to pause your video here and try to work this out, because you know, it's, it's a really crazy move that's about to happen. You can test your attacking ability. How can we make inroads here to the king? And it's, it's more complicated than it might seem. Yes? The rook could take the knight on a3. OK. I'll take back. You take with the queen. OK. Now Danny Machuca to move and blunder with white. You can do it. Queen b2. Right, excellent. Good blunder. <laughs> um, yeah, I take this and, and, and here, right? I knew you could do it, Danny. I knew you could do it. All right. <laughs> uh, Right, yeah, so instead, I mean, white plays here, and now you, you got nothing. All right, <laughs> he agrees. Yeah, you got nothing. So that wasn't played. Um, so we'll give some, some hints here. What you really need to do is, you know, get this knight to move away, because then you'd be looking good. Um, which means you probably need to put your knight here. The problem, of course, is he won't take with the knight. He'll take with the queen. Which means you need to get the queen out of there. Which means you might need to put a rook here on the c file. But there's a knight in your way. 
Man, this is a complicated problem. So what did Black play here? Have you got it now? So yeah, have you, have you figured it out? So here it, here it is. He played the fantastic move, knight to c7. And you're like, what? He's, he, isn't that piece hanging? So white took it. And all right, what's, uh, so what's going on now? How should we continue? Continue being brilliant. Don't be half brilliant here. You've got to be really brilliant. So, all right, we want a piece. How to continue? And you might be thinking, oh, all right, maybe we take this knight. Hooray. All right, maybe, maybe we're in now. But in such positions, you really got to be careful and understand uh, the resources that white has to defend. Here, you know, he needs to worry about this threat. And he can consider even just trying to trade the queens, which is now hard to avoid. So you got to be really careful. It's, uh, it's not quite that. It's an even more brilliant move. He sacrificed a bishop. So white took it. And now white's up two pieces. So black, you better checkmate, right? And again, this isn't the way forward. Uh, we still have this, this resource here. And now it's even better because I took all your pieces. So we got to be, be pretty careful here. You better play the right move. Um, you're either about to be the biggest genius ever or the biggest blunder ever. You just gave away all your pieces. So which will it be? What did black play in this position? This one, I'm, I'm sure somebody can find this one. All right, the only guy that ever raises his hand. You, yeah. <laughs> Knight to c4, excellent. All right. <laughs> You never know which way is which in this game. You just keep flipping it on you. Uh, yeah. OK. So yeah, it's tough being white here. It's definitely not easy. So white decided, yeah, I'm going to get checkmated. So I better checkmate you first. That's your only chance. And he played the move g6. Now, if you're a little too careless with black, you might not be the one checkmating your opponent. So let's take this, because it's a blunder. And let's take this, because it's a blunder. Now white, how is he going to checkmate you? It might seem all right, innocent. You know, you got your one check. All right, fantastic. I'll go in the corner. But now white can kind of get out of some of his trouble by making something. Danny, would you make a queen or a rook? You're a chess artist. A rook. A rook. OK. And then we'll take this. And white can even consider sacking the queen and getting the bishop to this diagonal. So just kind of like I did in the other variation. And black should still be a little bit better, but this is really complicated and not easy to win. So you get another really sharp position. that will be really tough. So black has to be careful. All right. Uh, all right, let's, let's go back. So in this move, he decided he would take the pawn once. White takes back. And now the threats aren't the same. So now he gets to take here. And all right, black is very close to checkmating. And all right, white has some checks. He's got a couple tricks here. He gets the first one in. And then both legal moves here are fine for black. They actually both win. But all right, this one seems to make a lot of sense. Here white checked by making a knight. And OK. And it's funny, you can actually survive if you just like, if you move your king somewhere. Like, like most king moves are, are surviving, which is kind of funny. You know, it seems like you shouldn't. But even if you check me like a bunch of times, like somehow black still wins. So that's kind of funny. Um, but he, he uh, let's see, bloop, bloop, bloop. Night check. He took it. And all right, so white was able to distract one of the rooks. That's kind of you know, crucial to his success here. But uh, what does white have now? Uh, he took the rook. And all right, so we might, your first instinct might be, well, no, take the queen. But yeah, you're going to get in another scenario where uh, this bishop comes back to defend. And it's not very easy to win. You're probably still winning, but it's, this is tougher than it has to be. Instead, black decided to just go checkmate white, because that's, that's a pretty good idea. Uh, so he gave this check. The king is going for a little jog here. Um, white's most testing move is probably just to go back. But then you know, the black queen gets into the game. And you know, life's, life's pretty tough to be, be white here. Um, if you just go back, we can yeah, even grab this queen now. Doop. And yeah, it's a little bit different with this guy here, because now I just need to, I need to find a way in here. And this is probably White's best chance to survive. But he decided to go up the board, which is really scary. And now he's getting checkmated. And it gives me another chance you know, to tell people what I, what I think in positions like this. 
when you have a lot of time on your clock and you're in this position, you really want to mate as absolutely best as you can. If it's mate in four, you want to mate in four moves. You don't want to mate in five or six because this is about to be the greatest game of all time. And so if it was mate in four and he made it in five, I couldn't show you the game. It would just be terrible. Like you, it's like you're showing me art and like you painted the Mona Lisa, but at the very end you're like, oh, the eyes, I don't know, dot, dot. You know, you're, you're about to make the greatest thing ever, so it's got to look good at the very end. And black played perfectly. Uh, white is getting checkmated here. And yeah, he gave it up here. Um, if here, where's the checkmate? You can do it. Oh, missed it by one. Are oh, you going to go here? No. Oh. <laughs> What's the move? What's the move? I thought the queen was on c3, but it's not. Yeah, say it. Queen to c2. Right. Queen to c2. I'm really glad you didn't say rook here, check. I'd be so angry. You ruined the, the masterpiece. And I'd just be like, this is the worst game you've ever played. I wouldn't be showing it. Uh, yeah, you got to mate in one when it's mate in one. And, okay, if I go this way. You can't go that way. Heather. I just did it. Yeah. Look, the computer let me do it. I did it. I can do it. Look, I did it. No, the computer accepted it. It won't let me make illegal moves. I did. I did some magic, and I went back in time, so that I could. I, I said, "Oh, I got checkmated over there. Maybe I'll escape over here." But uh, all right. So this is the, the last position here. How, what's the fastest way to mate? Come on, people that aren't raising their hands. Come on, come on, dude. Is this beneath you? So, <laughs> all right, all right, we got our all-star. You can do it. Get us the last checkmate of the day. Uh, all right. I'm gone. You're gone? All right. All right. You have a faster way. If you don't mate in two here, you're ruining the canvas. I ruined it. Right, yeah, don't ruin it. You're, who can do it? Yeah. Broke A2. Broke A2. Oh man, I'm gonna check. Right, excellent. So that'd be checkmate. And uh, yeah, so this game is really excellent. Not only was it you know, a fantastic display of tactics and the ability to attack your opponent, but uh, yeah, it shows kind of the resourcefulness and creativity that you need when you play the Nidorf. You know, you always gotta be thinking about these really, really creative ways to attack, because when both sides are attacking, you often wanna sacrifice the material and checkmate your opponent. Yeah.